There are the Emmys. There are the Grammys. There's the ESPYs. There's WrestleMania. There's the World Series. There's the NBA Finals, the WNBA Finals. But nothing compares to the sports cubicle NFL and Chicago Bears prediction extravaganza right here on WCPT 820 AM. It's the marvelous one. Dan Marver, it's Devin Tingle, it's Paul Shavari, it's myself, Mike Mercado. We are all here together. You know it is a big deal. Football is back, baby. We have to make our predictions. We need to make sure the entire universe knows that all of us are Nostradamus when we get to the end of the season because nobody believes that Paul predict the Super Bowl, but this is a chance for all of us to make sure we do, right? It's going to be a very fun one, guys, and I don't want to waste any time. The people are ready. The millions and millions of fans of the sports cubicle are ready. And the only way we could do this proper is by starting at the lakefront, starting at Soldier Field, starting with the Chicago Bears and what should be a very interesting season. We've seen a lot of turmoil in the city of Chicago. If you're a Sox fan, the roller coaster season that you've seen all of this baseball season, the summer Chicago Cubs rebuilding getting rid of stars, another season of getting rid of fan favorites. Chicago Bulls getting bounced out early in the NBA playoffs. A whole rebuild for the Chicago Blackhawks, but the Chicago Bears are the ones who have all the talk in town while the Sky are trying to win another WNBA Finals. We are here to see, is Justin Fields the truth? Is Cole Komet the truth? Is Darnell Mooney the truth? Let's get right into it. We have some over, some under, some predictions, how this Bears team is going to do. And we will start off with the man of the hour, Justin Fields. This all revolves around him. We've talked about it. We'll talk about it for the next 18 weeks. And I'm going to start off with the marvelous one, Dan Marver. Here are some of the numbers, okay? And I'll go over them as we go along throughout this entire panel. Justin Fields, when you look at this quarterback, marvelous one, over under 18 and a half touchdowns, over under 15 and a half interceptions, over under 3,000 passing yards for young Justin Fields. Marvelous. Let's start off with over under 18 and a half touchdowns for Justin Fields. I wonder what half a touchdown is, but actually, <laughs> on, that, on that one, I'm very optimistic that they're going to be over. You know what? I am the one that is going to predict the headline on the Sun Times or Tribune after the first game. If he does really, really well, it's going to say, Fields of dreams. <laughs> but, <laughs> and he's going to get more than eight, 18 and maybe get 18 and three quarters, but he'll get more than 18 and a half. <laughs> Over under 15 and a half interceptions, marvelous. Boy, that's going to be tight. Uh, he's, he's, he's prone to that. I don't know, really uh, say on that one, it's going to be really tight, but he's going to be just fraction under. Oh, very interesting. All right. A strong and, year. Yeah. yeah. Now, with all that in mind, so you're over on the touchdowns, you're under on the INTs. Where are you on 3,000 passing yards? Well, that means he's healthy, so I'd say under. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to go under for 3,000. Where do you think that number really is for, for Justin Fields? If you had to guess, where do you think he lands on that? Because there's going to be rushing yards. So where are you at with where you think he might lead? I mean, he might have a comment. Kind of a combination with rushing yards. I'm hoping they utilize his legs because it looks like they're, they were starting to, where he, you know, uh, take a sprint out and then he, you know, and then he have the defense run after him and then he pass it or he had the option. So I'd like to see more of that sprint out. So he may have a combination of that with, you know, 3,000. I don't think he's going to pass 3,000 yards at all. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's going to be close. <laughs> Very interesting, and we'll see how this impacts the Chicago Bears. Let's go to our resident Raiders fan who's going through his own development with this team, watching a new pieces get together. You've seen here locally how this new Bears regime has put this team together, what they're trying to do with Justin. So let's say when he gets on the field, when we're done with this marathon of a season, where are you, Paul? Over, under, 18 and a half touchdowns. It's got to be under. He was, what, like seven touchdowns last year, and I know he wasn't QB1 on every week's roster, was injured for a little bit last year. But I think even with more reps, it's got to be under. You know, I mean, 20 touchdowns is a lot, and I don't think he'll hover near that. So I think under is pretty easy. And he just doesn't have a lot of weapons on offense to to really air it out and, and, and get those touchdowns. So, um, it's going to be a learning year for Fields. I think I think he goes nowhere near 18 and a half. 
So when you're having a, a season where you're learning and you're developing, we have a lot of interceptions that might happen. So you see the line, 15 and a half interceptions. Is that over or under? I think over. And, and I think um, he had 10 last year, and, and he protects the ball fairly well. But I think it's a learning year, and it's a new offensive system. It's a team that's not slated to be well. So, so I could see Fields getting a little bit confident and you know, possibly – letting a, a little bit of a looser leash, you know, by the bears uh, offensive play calling and you'll make mistakes, you know, and I think 16 interceptions or more isn't a, a terribly large number for a young quarterback on a bad team. Um, and, and I think while the ratio probably will be not in his favor, I think it's going to be an interesting developmental year for him where while the stat line doesn't look good, it's, it's going to be more passing attempts uh, a little bit, more of a looser play calling to see what he can try and invent and create, you know, with a, with a limited personnel and, and probably being trailing in games and, and having to, to really work from behind. So I think through that, you're going to see, you know, some big passing yards, um, a lot of passing attempts, not a lot of touchdowns, probably a lot of mistakes and interceptions. So with all that in mind, when you think of the passing yards, we talked about, we know there's going to be a lot of rushing yards, but you had to put your money on it here over on our friends at DraftKings or FanDuel, Bet Rivers, wherever you may put your legal wagers over under 3000 passing yards. Under, I think despite, despite an increased amount of attempts, um, it, it's going to be hard to do that. And like I said, there, the personnel is just not there. 3000 is a large number. I, I just don't think, I think like Marvo was saying, it's not even going to be close. Like it might be 1700 to, to 2,400, somewhere in that range. Devin, you hear these, these guesses, these numbers. You're somebody who's had your eye on Justin Fields' development, knowing what next year's draft brings. So let's get your feet to the fire. Over oh, under 18 and a half touch and touchdowns for young Justin Fields. Well, I was worried I was going to be the Debbie Downer here, but Paul and Marv have already been doing that for me. <laughs> I definitely think under, but I think he'll be close to it. I mean, it, this the big thing is I realize the Bears kind of have gotten rid of a lot of their offensive weapons here. I mean, Allen Robinson is gone. He was your number one receiver. Uh, Jimmy Graham, you know, he might not have been the best. He wasn't tight end number one. But he the one thing he did was score touchdowns here. And I'm sorry, I don't see Darnell Mooney as the – as he's the number one wide receiver right now, but we'll get to that later. I don't see him being your true number one receiver. Maybe with Brian Pringle. Pringle, I mean, we can see something better here. But in all reality, I could see Fields maybe doing – 15 touchdowns as an average here, but 18 and a half, that, that seems a little bit too optimistic for me. So then are you worried about this line? Where are you on the over under on 15 and a half interceptions? Over. I think mm. he might actually throw 18 and a half interceptions if we really want to go there here. And that's, that's me being a little bit optimistic here. Again, like Paul said it best, this is a developmental year. This is a team with a lot of, you know, new coach, new GM, I could even we could even sort of say new quarterback in Justin Fields as he has yet to play. He wasn't the starter last year and he didn't even play a complete season, wasn't even healthy the entire season. And this year, I mean, this is definitely going to be the thing. I don't think Semyon's going to take that starting job for him unless he gets hurt here. But again, just there's a lot of, you know, pieces of this offense that are kind of coming together as they've done a lot of changes, a lot of drafts, some different things here. And on top of this, we have a whole new coaching regime, as I already mentioned. That's going to change a lot here. So I could definitely see this kind of being a heavy interception average okay amount of touchdown season for Justin Fields. Well, finally then, I mean, with that all in mind, where are you on the 3,000 passing yards? Are you over or under? Way under. I definitely say way under. And I think that's just mostly because, as I said before, I Justin Fields, young guy, we got a new coaching staff. And when you look at the receivers out there, I mean, Cole Komet's a great wide receiver, but I don't remember Justin Fields really having that connection with him, you know, that like guys like, you know, Chicago Bears quarterbacks in general have had with their touchdowns throughout the past. Well, I mean, and that goes to it. I mean, he doesn't have any connection with any real wide receiver other than Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, developing as a tight end. And this all comes together. What the marvelous one, Dad Marvara, has said, what Paul Shabari, with Devin Single have all brought up, that we may be excited. The potential is there. The prospect is there. There's excitement there, but it's still development. There's still expectations that need to be held for this team, and that includes a lot of mistakes that will be made and a lot of great moments. We saw some of it last year in that Pittsburgh game, but then in that same season earlier on, we saw the, the travesty that was that Cleveland game. How much of that was Matt Nagy? The, this season will tell us a lot. 
And if I had to put some allowance into this, I am over on the touchdowns. I think he's going to throw over 18 and a half touchdowns. I think there's going to be a lot of games that they're down. They're going to throw the ball a lot. They're going to be in the red zone. The difference between this team is I don't think they have enough depth when it comes to starters, when you're playing some of these better teams to win the three point field goal game, the six point game, the touchdown game. But I think he's going to throw a, a few interceptions. I think he's going to throw about 21, 22 touchdowns. I think he's going to throw a lot of interceptions. I think it's going to be a really close ratio, but that's what's to be expected. If it's because he doesn't have the talent out there that makes it a little bit easier for him to get to his wide receivers. If it is that, you know, what would we always say? The NFL hole is different than NFL open. It's different than college football open. So it's going to be a lot of mistakes being right there. So I think definitely he's on the over of interceptions. I think he pushes right around. 2,700. I think it's about 2,700 passing yards of where he's going to be at. So I'm at the under for Justin Fields. But I think unanimously, we all agree, the talent's there. The excitement is there. It's just, does he have the help? And will it all come together so early into this development? But we move on because he's not the only story of this offense. I want to move on to the running backs really fast because while Khalil Herbert, who was hurt throughout this preseason, Let things up last season. There's some excitement there. We know Justin Fields will be taking a lot of rushes. They'll be moving the pocket. David Montgomery is playing for a contract. David Montgomery has been professional. He's been a rock. He's been a very solid, if you play fantasy football, second-tier running back. But this is time for him to make money. And we know in the NFL, it's hard to give these guys money. So there is a prop I want to get to you guys. It has nothing to do with touchdowns. Touchdowns are great, but we know with these type of offenses, tight ends are going to get all love. A lot of different wide receivers. It's not necessarily the running backs on the goal line. I want to talk about rushing yards. With Khalil Herbert being there, with Justin Fields being there, I'm going to start off with Paulie on this one when it comes to David Montgomery. Paulie, over under 820 rushing yards for David Montgomery. This is a hard one because I think that the easy thing that would be to say under, especially I think, was it Poles or Eberflus recently talking about how you know, he's not going to factor in much. They don't know what to do with him. Like some quote like that, like, you know, about how, you know, they don't know how to best utilize David Montgomery. And I get it. He's not your ideal back in any NFL system nowadays, but um, he's strong. He's he he'll get yards for you, you know, and I, and I think they'll find ways to use him. I think any offensive coordinator worth their their weight in this this league knows how to utilize a guy that stays healthy a lot and knows how to get yards for you, even if it's three yards on a play. And and I think Montgomery is the type of dude could really be a workhorse and get his way over 820, especially in an offense that, that I think, you know, like you were saying with fields, you know, the excitement's there, you know, you're going to see a lot of, a a lot of passing, but I think despite that, you're going to see, they're going to get successful moving the ball on the ground and mixing it up. And I think Montgomery is going to be a guy if he's healthy and if they give him the touches could really go over 820, but would hover around there. I think a thousand is a little bit uh, extreme to expect out of him, but I think I wouldn't be surprised if, if a guy like him, if he stays healthy and if he gets the touches could work his way slowly to a thousand at the end of a 17 game season. Dev, where are you on David Montgomery? We know what the NFL thinks about running backs, what it thinks about running backs on their second contract, but you've seen Monty do a lot of great stuff here in Chicago, over under 820 rushing yards. Well, to reply to Paul, I guess I'm I'm easy here because I'm going to say under here. I was reading in the Chicago Tribune this morning, and it's saying that they don't know, like kind of going off Paul says, they don't know how, where Montgomery is going to fit into this playbook here. They really have no idea how to use the guy here. And yeah, Khalil Herbert was really good last year, but I want to talk a lot about Tress and Ebner, who did some really good work in the preseason games here. You know, he didn't play in the Browns, but he's averaging about 30 yards a game here. I mean, and in preseason, you're not even playing a full game, 30 yards a game for maybe a, a half. That's actually pretty good, especially for a guy who's a rookie running back new to the league here. So, I mean, definitely got some new talent here. And yeah, I think Dave Montgomery is very talented. He's been very reliable, I would say. I mean, I don't think he's going to win or lose you games. So I think he's a safe bet to have here. But, again, it kind of goes back to what I was saying with Fields here. We got a new coach, you know, a new playbook out here. And if Montgomery isn't going to fit that playbook, then they're going to try to work with Herbert. They're going to try to work with Ebner. You know, they're going to try something different here. And they may even try to trade Montgomery. Like you're saying, it's a contract year here. This is a team that's rebuilding here. And I'm sorry, the franchise is in Justin Fields. 
not Dave Montgomery here. And as we all know, what position player lasts longer in the NFL, a quarterback or a running back? Running backs get hurt and not like that. So, I mean, I could definitely think see Dave Montgomery not, not even finishing a Chicago Bear this year, let alone getting 820 yards here. But if they don't know how to, where to put him in the playbook, and we got some, you know, talent and the guy, a new guy and a guy from last year who showed his potential here. I, I just, I don't see him breaking 820 yards. I'm sorry. I, lo- I love you, David. You're a nice guy. I just don't see it. Marvelous one. You've heard one go over or at least get close to it and one go under. Where are you on David Montgomery over under 820 rushing yards? Well, I look at the past, maybe predicting the future because in 21 and 13 games, he had 846. In 2020, in 15 games, he had 1,070. In 2019, in 16 games, he had 889, all of which were over 820. And the fields will take over some of those rushing yards. But I really liked his look in that Cleveland game. So I'm going to say he's going to pass 820 based upon his past. And he will be the featured back, as if there is a featured back, obviously. And, I, and he looked really good to me in the Cleveland game. Yeah, I I think for the most part for Montgomery, it's just going to come down to there's not a lot of A-tier players on this team. There's maybe one that we know of in Roquan, and then there's a lot of guys that we think are good. There's a lot of guys who can be really good, but when you're looking at Montgomery, it's a respectable player, and he has the track record, and he has the ability. He hasn't had the devastating injury, so like any other running back, if he stays healthy, he can do it. It's just if he stays healthy. What's fascinating with this, I'm going to go on the over with Monty on 820 yards. What's fascinating, though, we'll cover it all season, how much does Khalil Herbert or any other person they bring in affect what happens with David Montgomery and how Ryan Poles and this new regime look at running backs? Because we've seen what happens when you play Kamara's and you play Derrick Henry's and you play the Ezekiel Elliott's, what that does to your roster. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Bears do there. And now we get to some of the fun rapid fire stuff for your Chicago Bears season because there is only one wide receiver who we're talking about right now, and that's Darnell Mooney. So let's go around the classroom and over under 1,000 catching yards and over under four and a half touchdowns. We'll start with Dev. Dev, over under 1,000 yards catching, over under four and a half touchdowns. This is a lightning round. Do you know me, Mercado? I take notes for every show here. <laughs> so here's what I got written here. I definitely think Mooney is going to go over on 1,000 yards and over on four and a half touchdowns. Those are such easy numbers for a guy to hit. But here's the thing. Do I see Mar- uh, Mooney as the hero of this receiver regime? Absolutely not. But he has been proven to be Justin Fields' number one receiver, his favorite wide receiver here. Then again, we've also got to bring in Byron Pringle. You know, a guy who came from Kansas City, who was, a, you know, the third round guy. So, and of course, Mahomes uh, Fields is nowhere near close to Justin Mahomes. <laughs> we wish uh, Justin Mahomes. Fields is together. nowhere close to Patrick Mahomes. And of course, this is definitely here. But I mean, it's very possible coming off the season with Kansas City here from going from a really an A list team to a, a D list team in the Chicago Bears with a guy like Byron Pringle. That's like he'll definitely get a lot more targets than he did with Mahomes from Fields here, especially since that's going to be your number one two receiver guy. But let's just take a look here. He was targeted 60 times last year, Byron Pingle, Pringle, but he got 49 receptions and five touchdowns. I'm more interested in him than Darnell Mooney this season here, but we all know Mooney is Fields' number one favorite wide receiver here. But again, things could easily change here because Mooney is not your – he's not a number one receiver on any other team that is over 500 in my opinion here. And if we face a team that's got a really good defense, they may guard Mooney very heavily. And, I, and I'm and i sorry, he's not going to be, you know, your Randy Mosses, you know, breaking it through triple coverage here. So 1,000 yards and uh, four and a half touchdowns, that is easily something he's going to break over, especially here. You know, we play the Lions two games a season. That's going to be so easy for them just to do. Hell, that he might do it in those two games alone. But definitely I see – I'm kind of more interested in Byron Pringle here. Pringle. I'll get it right it's, once, I swear. It's going to be interesting that he's – if he gets healthy – and if he could stay out of legal trouble. But we'll see because we do know right now Darnell Mooney is the guy. And Paulie, knowing that and hearing some of the rhetoric, where are you at on Darnell Mooney trying to take the step to be a true number one? Over under 1,000 yards catching, over under four and a half touchdowns. Under 1,000 because I think like I was saying earlier, I don't think Fields gets more than 2,400 passing yards. There's no way that despite Mooney's presence as – a difference maker in this offense, I don't think he's going to dominate the amount of attention enough to get a thousand total yards on the ground. You know, so I, I think a thousand yards receiving is 
a little excessive under on that. But at the same time, he's a finisher. He's a scorer. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that they are going to point to. So I think over four and a half touchdowns, I think five is obtainable because that average is what? Like one every three games and change. I think he can do that in a 17-game season. For sure, I think five touchdowns or more is is definitely in his realm. They're bringing the fire, Marver. Where are you on Darnell Mooney, the number one on this team, a lot of uh, number two on a lot of different teams, over under one thousand yards catching, over under four and a half touchdowns for Darnell Mooney. I believe he will not get five hundred yards in each game against Detroit, <laughs> and therefore he will be under a thousand, and it will be over on the touchdowns. Uh, they, they may have some, you know, touchdowns even from close in. Uh, you know, uh, you know, like a post pattern from the ten yard line or something. So I think he'll be able to do the the touchdown, but will not do the yardage. I, I think he'll do the yardage. I think he'll go over a thousand. He's one of the somebody's got to get the ball, right? I mean, just like DK Metcalf, even though he's a better receiver, these guys you're gonna be in garbage time. And I think he's over on the touchdowns. The real question becomes, who's the second guy beyond Cole Komet, who we'll get to in one second? Who's the second guy? Because that's gonna be the difference of if there becomes an emergency, if if one of these guys like a Pringle does come in and or they bring in a Will Fuller and then they have real competition, sure. But as of right now, the ball's got to go somewhere. And Justin Fields can only do so much. So I'm on the overs of both. Here's a fun one everybody's talking about. Do they have a Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, at Mark Andrews? We'll find out. Cole Komet, over, under, four and a half touchdowns. Paulie, I will start with you, somebody who knows a lot about good tight ends with Darren Waller over in Vegas. Cole Komet, the hope of the Chicago Bears in that position, over, under, four and a half touchdowns. Well, I know uh, Cole Komet, too, because I, I watched him play in high school at St. Viator. He's a talented tight end, and I, and I think if, if best used correctly, he could go over four and a half touchdowns. I, I, I wouldn't rule that out, but I'm going under on this one. I think it's hard. I think um, just the transitional year for the Bears, I don't know how they're going to utilize tight end, and, and I think in years past, you've seen, like a lot of teams, you bring in a lot of different tight ends, but Cole Komet has not established himself in the NFL as, as you know, a Darren Waller or... Travis Kelsey, you know, how, how you can best utilize tight ends. And he sat behind Jimmy Graham on a roster. You know, someone that kind of at his best was was probably one of the greatest ever to be a wide receiver tight end in this league. And I think uh, Komet is not as athletic of a wide receiver as some of the best wide receivers in this league. I think he's still a little clunky. He's still a little bit of a tight end body, you know. So I think when you're talking about touchdowns, I don't think this is a this guy is a finisher unless we see some sort of new weird connection between Fields and Komet. You know, is that relationship going to be solidified this year? I don't think so. So I think under four and a half tight uh, touchdowns for for Cole Komet in this offense. Very interesting inside baseball stuff from Paulie. Dangerous, marvelous one. We've been talking mm-hmm. about it. I think we saw it in at least in the, the last preseason game. There seems to be some chemistry building between the two. Again, we need to see Justin Fields and 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 Cole Komet do this in the regular season. But four and a half touchdowns over under on the young tight end hitting that number. I think they'll utilize him in, in the between the twenties. But I don't can't see four and a half touchdowns. I could see him as a good outlet driving down the field, and they're going to probably use somebody if he's healthy again, like a Bellis Jones Jr. Something like somebody like that. For you know, as a as a secondary receiver, which has to be developed, obviously. Uh, so I could see Komet as being the guy they throw the pass to, you know, in a third and seven at the forty yard line. But I don't see touchdowns. He's not going to make that. I don't think. Dev Cole Komet over under four and a half touchdowns for the young tight end. Under, I have to agree with Marvin here. It's like I definitely think he'll get decent yardage, but I don't see him getting that many touchdowns. And it kind of goes to the whole thing of. I don't see Justin Fields utilizing the tight end like, you know, so many other, like a lot of quarterbacks, that's their go-to receiver here. But it's clear with Fields, it's going to be in Mooney here. And it's, I'm just, I, I'm not seeing that connection between him and Komet here. And it's it's not a stab at Cole Komet. I think that he's a great guy, you know, great player here. But just, is he going to fit into the, you know, Ibru Flus and Fields playbook here? And quite frankly, I'm just, I'm not seeing that connection between the two of them here. So, I mean, he might get a decent amount of yards, absolutely, but when it comes down to end zone, we all know who Fields is going for, and it's it's not Cole Komet. And like Paul said, you know, he sat with, a, you know, one of the greatest, uh, sat behind one of the greatest all time in Jimmy Graham here, but that's the only reason where I could possibly see him getting more. But again, Jimmy Graham was used mostly just in the end zone to score touchdowns. I don't see them doing that with Cole Komet. 
I think there's something to the Sharks having their eyes on somebody, and that's a name you keep hearing when it comes to fantasy drafts, sleepers is Cole Komet. And I think a young quarterback's biggest security blanket is what? It's tight end. And when you're moving the pocket, when you're doing the Shanahan thing, when you're doing what this what this offense that Matt Eberflus is bringing on, what they did in Green Bay, you saw it a lot in Green Bay, how the tight end was utilized. It's up to Cole Komet to take that step. I think it's under, but I think it's an important player nonetheless. All right, guys, we finally made it. Before we head to the whole league, I'm going to go around the entire cubicle. How many wins for the Chicago Bears and the divisional standings at the end of the season? I will start with Marvelous. How many wins for the Monsters of Midway, and how do the standings of the division play out? Because this depends upon how well they do against the Detroit and Minnesota. I think they, they play both New York teams. They play Houston. And that means I, I've stuck by 7 and 10, and so that's what I'll live with. And I still – they'll probably finish ahead of Detroit, and I don't know about Minnesota. I'd say third place. I, I still don't think they can beat Green Bay. So uh, I go down the list here. I see maybe one or two against New York, one or two in the division, Houston, and Washington maybe. So I'd say 7 and 10, third place. Very good. All right. Seven and ten, third place in the NFC North. Paulie Dangerous. How many wins for the Chicago Bears? And where does this NFC North shake out? I, I like where, where Marver's at, too, because look at that schedule and Atlanta is on the list. So, I, you know, I think, you know, it's an easy schedule. And, like, of course, the Chicago Bears at their worst <laughs> transitional sort of, there's no way anyone would have expected them to make the playoffs. <laughs> of course, they'd get the easiest, cakewalkiest schedule anyone could get. But I got them at 6-11. and 11. I think 5-12, and 6-11, and 11, as optimistic as I want to get and as, as many uh, garbage time wins as they're going to get and as many bad teams they play. I, th I think, you know, we're still seeing a Bears team that's um, – you know, they're picking up Raiders trash bin uh, linemen, you know, no offense to Alex Leatherwood, but like the amount of waiver wire <laughs> pickups, when you look at this Bears team, there's there's no way they're going to be a team that's a 500 team in this NFL. And I think, you know, seven wins is optimistic and I love it and they could do it with the schedule, but I got them like five and 12, six and 11, and I'll commit to the six and 11 for them. Cause I really do think, you know, like six, seven wins, that's not unheard of, heard of with, with what they've got going. And, and, you know, they're, they're not the worst team in the NFL. They've got some talented players. They've got some sort of semblance of a future here with a good coaching staff. This could be the beginning of something great. But, you know, we're, we're talking about a bad team. We're talking about a losing football team this year. So I'll commit to the 6-11. and 11. Devin, where are you at? How many wins for the Chicago Bears in the NFC North? What I think would be ideal for me is if the Bears were to go 1-16 and 16 and get the overall first-round draft pick here. Just, just don't lose them all. That's ideal. Do I think they're going to do that? No. Like Paul said, they have a little bit of a cakewalk season with some of these easy teams. But this is the Bears we're talking about. They can easily allow six touchdowns, give up six touchdowns in one game from Jared Goff for crying out loud here. They never seem to surprise me in the worst way possible. I'm going with five and third, uh, five and 12 here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can't count for some reason. And just, I think third, like Marver said, third place here because that Detroit team is still pretty dang awful here. And I think it's going to be a battle between Green Bay and Minnesota for that first place spot here because I've said it before and I've said it again. If Kirk Cousins was on a different team, he, we'd be talking about him in MVP status here, but he's on a team that just does not provide him enough weapons to succeed, but he still makes it work. So, and Aaron Rodgers is getting up there in age. I mean, Justin Jefferson would be nice in a Chicago Bears uniform if Kirk Cousins doesn't want that. So I, I'll take that for Minnesota, but it's funny you bring that up because I think a team like Minnesota is the reason why the Bears are going to win seven games. And I think a team like Minnesota is why this Bears team is going to get false hope to a lot of Bears fans because of the way these playoff seedings work, they're going to be in it. And what is the one thing we know about the NFL? It's all parody. There's like four really good teams, and then there's the rest. And then there's the Seattle Seahawks. So we have to figure out where we're at later on as the season develops. But where I'm at right now, seven wins. And I think all of us agree on one thing. There's potential for this Bears team to be good. There's some goods. There's some bad. But they're not the worst team in the NFL. And they're not going to get the first round, the first overall pick in the first round. So we have to get over that idea. And you have to get used to the idea of being very frustrated of them losing a lot of close games. 
But guys, we did it. We got through our predictions for your Chicago Bears, which should be a very fun season, an entertaining season, a developing season, a, se a season full of ups and downs and emotions. And of course, we still have to deal with Paul's Oakland slash Las Vegas Raiders and whatever nonsense and ulcers they give him. But we want to know your thoughts on the Chicago Bears. How will the season play out? We're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. It's the marvelous one, Dan Marver. It's Devin Tingle. It's Paul Shavari. I'm Mike Mercado. Coming up next on the Sports Cubicle, we got to go around the NFL.